Hello and welcome to module two of the online training on migration policy, free movement and regional integration within the context of COVID-19 and the AFCT after me. So this model is on drafting or revising national migration policy that complies with sub-regional, regional and international conventions. So as a way of introducing this model, I will read a quote from Edward Grissart and Patrick Chemois, and they are writing on when the war for the outlaws of national identity. So it says, whenever a culture or a civilization has failed to think of the other, to think of itself with the other, to think of the other in itself, these thief preserves of stones, ions, barbed wires, electrified fences, or close ideologies have risen, collapsed, and still come back to us with new stridents. So this I will reappose the issues that we will be discussing. So in the course of this model, it is important to be familiar with certain terms that may be recurring in the course of the discussion. So one of them is a migrant worker. So in this context, we refer to a migrant worker as a person who, who is to be engaged or has been engaged or intends to be engaged in any remunerated activity in a state for which he or she is not a citizen. So this is taken from the International Convention on the Rights of Migrant Workers and their families. Then also about migrants, since we are talking about migration. So basically, a migrant is a person who is living his or her normal place of residence and by crossing of international borders, or with someone who intends to move or has already moved. And this movement could be within or within the national boundaries or across the national boundaries. And the movement could be voluntary or forced for reasons, or several reasons, and the length of stay could also be considered. So basically, if you are talking of migration, we are talking of movement, whether within a country, and this country could be a crossing of defined borders within the country or across the national boundaries. And so whether the person is being forced or moving voluntarily doesn't matter, but there's also a reason for it. Then we also have national policy. So national policy in this case, where we refer more to national migration policy. But basically a national policy would be a statement that a government has made on what it intends to do or not to do. And this would, would be within the confines of its laws, regulations, uh, decisions that are taken, the orders regarding the selection, entry, uh, stay or removal of foreign nationals. So now we'll also be looking at uh, delving more into a migration policy. So what is the interest of a migration policy? Most often, migration policy serves as a means of um, managing migration in an appropriate manner, and also dealing with migration issues that relate to the political, uh, the pending political issues in the country. And these decisions must be within the confines of the commitments that the nation has made, especially um agreements relating to treaties and those that also concern human rights because in terms of migration management or migration governance human rights issues are very important because they are top of the agenda they are the common occurring issues and find migrants being abused in most cases so in migration policy rights of migrants are very important and these are highlighted within the national and um, the national and international or regional agreements that nations have ratified. And so, in terms of uh, looking at this, right in Africa, the treaties that we, we are considered most of the time in 
migration policies include the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and its protocols on women. So this, uh, this is a treaty that uh, deals with the human rights of um, all people, including migrants and women um, being more susceptible to vulnerability, abuses and exploitation and their migratory space have also been given special protocol to deal with their issues. And then there's also the African Charter on Democracy, Election and Governance. Even though democracy and elections and governance may not have a direct bearing on migration, its outcomes tend to impact more migration, especially the adverse uh, side of migration, because most of those are the issues that lead to um, displacement, whether internally or internationally, refugee issues. And these are agreements that are binding on member states. So it is important to consider this in migration policy and ensure that. And this policy also encourages member states to adopt liberal democracy. It also discourages the change of um, political power through unconstitutional means or the agreement is that member the power is supposed to change from one um, and the um, body to the other it should be through constitutional means and through election which is being organized by a recognized um, institution in the country then there's also the au convention governing the aspect um, specific aspects specific to the problems of refugees in africa so refugee issues in africa is also a thorny issue and it is important that these are also considered in, my, in every migration policy. Then the African Union Convention on the Protection and Assistance of Internally Displaced Persons in Africa. So this is also an important issue that is also be considered in every migration policy. Then there's also the protocol, protocol to the treaty establishing the African economic African economic community relating to the free movement of persons, the right of residence, and the right of establishment. So this has been an issue among most of the um, rights in Africa. We talk of ECOWAS, talk of the Eastern African community, SADC. These are all issues about free movement, making national borders, um, providing a conducive environment for neighboring countries to, to move freely within the African continent. And then there's also the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area. So as people are moving, they need to also earn a livelihood and also trade issues are also very important as a source of livelihood. So markets of member states within the African um, continent, they were to open up for other nationals to also access such markets. Then in the management of migration, whether it is forced, legal or undocumented, or it is taking place within or outside the national borders, it is, has been a challenge in Africa. And efforts have been made over the years to deal with this challenge. And to remedy this situation, the AU decided to put in place a framework in 2006 that will guide member states, the regional economic commissions, in the drafting of uh, their migration policies. So this will also serve as a guide. So the migration policy framework for Africa serves as a guide for nationals and then the regional economic commissions in drafting their migration policy I should be in consonance with this and respecting the rights of everybody, including migrants. So the subsequent discussion is going to focus on the provisions of the migration policy framework for Africa. And this policy provides that there's a need to mainstream migration issues into national and regional, regional security, stability and development cooperation programs. So for every migration policy, these issues need to be taken um, into account to ensure that they comply and then the local laws are harmonized in this regard. And to also ensure that they work for free movement of persons and strengthening 
intra and inter regional cooperation. It is also to create the condition for participation, particularly the African diaspora, even though they are outside the continent, their economic and social contribution to development in their country of origin and then to the African continent um, in general is enormous. So migration policies you are supposed to create the enabling environment and establish the enabling institutions, agencies, and departments that are able to reach out to these people and ensure that they are able to also contribute fully in this regard. So, but however, it should be noted that the migration policy framework for Africa is a non-binding policy. It's a flexible document that only uh, supports our migrants to be committed, our states to be committed in this regard. So this policy was also revised in 2016 to deal with outstanding issues that were not considered in the initial stage. So now we look at why we have to develop a migration policy document. We need to develop a migration policy document. So having a migration policy document is very imperative because it clarifies the government vision and objective, also defines eight lines of actions and determines the actions that are supposed to be taken and the various institutions, the various actors that are supposed to be considered in the course of dealing or governing issues of migrants and migration in general. And also a migration policy document also contextualize the factors that influence or are influenced by migration. And knowing that migration is a very complex, a cross-cutting issue, uh, taking this issue to give a better understanding of the complexities and the dynamics and how to de define what intervention that should lead to the desired changes that every state wants to see in its migration um, policy development and then the impact that migration will have on development in the country. A migration policy also determines the actors who is supposed to influence which area. So looking at it, it's supposed to be done at the national, the continental, the regional, even at the international level. So there is a the need for cooperation and also synergizing the abilities of these um, institutions to ensure that migration governance goes on smoothly. And then the policy document also uh, help in establishing principles on which good governance of migrants must be based. In terms of good governance, are looking at non-discrimination because since you have other people who are not nationals in your country, it is important to consider the, that they are all given equal treatment. They are entitled to their, their rights, their fundamental human rights. And also there's supposed to be transparency. Dealing with them should not be shrouded in secrecy. You know, it's supposed to be open for them to see their rights and their responsibilities and what they can also um, do their participation. And also to also make them accountable and so ensure that there is coordination and coherence in terms of international cooperation when we are dealing with the international treaties that the nation states have ratified. Then it's also to identify the actors and also consolidate institutional landscape. This is to set the rules of the game and then define rules and responsibilities for different um, actors. So in terms of migration management, we have institutions, national, uh, regional, and then even civil society organizations that play different roles. And all this uh, through a migration policy document, we're able to identify all of them and then coordinate their abilities, assign roles and know which roles that each um, entity is supposed to play. It also reconciles interests and then manage stakeholder expectations, and then their preferences. Then to also strengthen the capacity of collecting and then the processing of migration data. And in terms of migration governance, it's also important. Data is very key in terms of um, migration governance, which we will come to later, because it impacts on knowing more about migration trends 
in the country and, and the challenges that are associated with it and what government needs to um, deal with to ensure a smooth um, migration governance. And I said to also um, promote and then foster institutional cooperation and political coherence. It also helps in managing the volume, composition, origin, direction, and structure of migration flows. And this uh, can be achieved if you have good um, data um, collection systems and management in the country. So if there are systems that have been established, robust systems to collect and manage my migration data. So now how to draw up a migration policy? In drawing up a migration um, policy document, what are the issues that are important to consider? And as I mentioned earlier, most of these uh, guidelines that are from the migration policy framework um, for Africa, the provisions that have been made. And so to draw up a migration policy, it's important to use an aim for inclusiveness. So to ensure that there is the, the, the incorporation of every sector, every institution that matters in the area of migration to bring out, to ensure that these participants come on board and then contribute their quota to the migration governance. And it's also to ensure that the running of these activities and also the ra rational use of resources so in terms of identifying this, know that which um, institutions are supposed to play which roles in able to avoid duplication and then misuse of resources. So the specific roles are assigned to every institution that matters. Then there's also the need to rely mainly on national skills. It is important because since um, migration documents um, tends to be more of a national document, it's important to rely on the local resources, the local content, because they will understand the issues better, the benefits and the challenges, and then the cost-cutting issues in migration in the country. However, it is also important to also cooperate with international organizations that deal with and, um, issues of migration, be it international organization, international civil society bodies, to also understand the best practices elsewhere and how these best practices can also be incorporated in the national migration policy to have a very effective policy. And it's also take charge of all the commitments made by the country. So in terms of the treaties or conventions that the, the country has ratified, because the migration policy, the, the laws that are applied are supposed to be in harmony with these treaties. So whether they are the regional or the international level, looking at the United Nations, the European Union, the uh, African uh, community, the Caribbean, the Pacific states, all these treaties must be considered in the drafting of uh, migration policy. So in drafting migration, policy, what goes into the migration policy, the content of a state migration policy or a national migration policy. So there are some important headings that are supposed to be considered. So one important one has to do with labor and educational migration, labor and ed education migration. So migration, since we know it's more of a livelihood activity. So people are migrating to earn a living. So we tend to have migration being dominated more by people with um, economic reasons. So in, in dealing with this, a national migration policy should consider that it's uh, public policies, national legislations on labor migration are supposed to take account of all this and supposed to consider that migrants who are coming the skills that they are bringing about should be recognized. So institutions are supposed to establish to recognize the skills that are coming and also recognize the certifications that they are, they are also bringing from other countries. There should be a way of certifying them to see if they actually meet the, the labor demands 
of the country. And then how they can also be incorporated in certain aspects of the national economy. Then there's also the need to also um, have joint um, training for labor migrants that are accepted across the neighboring country, especially in Africa, because even though the migration policy is a national migration policy, it's so towards um, regional integration. So it also should be formulated considering training skills that are acquired in other countries, how they can also be accepted and made useful. There's also the regional and continental cooperation, the harmonization of um, migration policies, and then uh, ensure that academic mobility of students are all harmonized. Then it is also important to also consider issues of circulation and then brain drain. Migration obviously um, takes away key um, skills that nations have trained, and this tends to benefit the destination countries. So the migration policy also creates the environment, conducive environment, where even though these brains have left the country, they, they are able to return and then bring back the, the skills that they have acquired and then how they can also be utilized in the states. And the remittances are also very important in terms of national development, how they are very useful in dealing with poverty issues, dealing with education, and then other developmental issues. So avenues should also be created for migrants to be able to remit easily, send it back their remittances to their uh, countries of origin with ease for national development. Then there are also issues of cross-governance, uh, migration um, of cross-border governance. In recent cases, there are issues of securitization of um, national borders. Even though migration is beneficial, it's also being taken advantage by illicit migrants who try to bring out um, smog, so issues of smuggling and then smuggling illegal um, communities, uh, commodities. Even though borders are supposed to be open to ensure free movement of people and goods. But it is also important to also balance this while ensuring that there's free movement of goods. It's also supposed to have a, um, security intelligence to also curtail the illegal movement of people, especially people who move in and pose threats to a national security, public health, and other public issues. So it is important to consider um, border management intelligence able to curtail all this. And so, so there's also need to also understand the, the scope of every nation, the border demarcations, to ensure that the strengthening of good neighborliness and also um, harmony between communities and border, um, border communities, ensure that the administration of um, borders is done efficiently. And so the, also the, the need to also find ways of facilitating cross-border trade. Because even though the borders need to be managed, it is supposed to also create avenues for people to also bring in goods or send out goods as they are trading within the continent, especially in this time that the African continental free trade area, it is in, in force. A migration um, policy documents should also consider issues of irregular migration, especially in Africa. Irregular migration is a very important issue that is also related to our border management. So there are issues of smuggling of um, smuggling of illegal um, migrants. So there is also the important issue to consider is the strengthening of legal framework for the prevention of um, smuggling of migrants, and then whilst also protecting the rights of those who have been um, smuggled. Even though they've been smuggled, it's important to consider that they are human, their fundamental human rights are still intact. So trafficking in persons 
uh, migration policy was to put in place mechanisms, legal regimes that helps in preventing the trafficking in person, which is the dominant problem in Africa. So member states are encouraged to implement the Wagadua Action Plan of 2006 to prevent the and protect persons who have been um, trafficked. For all in, in, in consonant with international partnership and other programs that have been put in place to fight trafficking in persons. Then in dealing with irregular migration, there are also issues of also encouraging um, return of migrants. So migrants who have migrated and have been returned, important for our countries of origin to ensure their reintegration. And also at the same time, at the destination countries, um, countries that have um, migrants coming in, I suppose also ensure that they are integrated, enabling the environment are created for them to also integrate, also benefit from the services that are being provided to people in the nation. They are supposed to benefit from all this. And this also to, can be done by ensuring that there's cooperation and mutual understanding between countries of origin and destination. If this doesn't exist, the right of the migrants will be inflicted upon. And also to ensure that migrants are treated in a humane manner. And in all this, national security and regional cooperation stability are very important because migration also has the potential of fueling insecurity. So a migration policy also put in mechanisms to ensure that even if there are conflicts in the country, the architecture doesn't spread to the region that also put um, a risk to uh, the regional and continental stability. They also have issues of forced displacement. Refugee and asylum seekers are issues that are very pertinent in Africa. There are also issues of internally displaced persons. And these issues of refugees and um, internally displaced persons, the yeah, issues could be protracted, and which will also require durable solutions. That has to do with maybe the need to um, help them to reintegrate or resettle them into a third country. But migration policy also put in place mechanisms to ensure that the root causes of re refugee situations and internal, internal displaced issues are dealt with. So they must take in place issues in, into consideration issues as crisis prevention, conflict management, and resolution. And at the same time, issues of integration and reintegration must be key, both at the regional and then a, at the origin and then the destination levels. Then there's also the issues of stateless persons. So in, in part in terms of international law, um, statelessness is considered as a gross abuse of human rights because every human being is supposed to have the protection of a state. So my, the policy framework for Africa encourages member states in the drafting of their migration policy to ensure that persons who have been rendered stateless are providing the opportunity to access citizenship in their, in their country so that they are not um, find, so they don't find themselves in vulnerable situation. Because in most cases, stateless people are very vulnerable because they are not under the covering of any country. And internal migration also is, is also a, an issue that is also very important in migration and policy development. Because the rights of migrants, whether they are international or internal, needs to be respected with issues of urbanization, rural urban migration, and then the adverse effects that are involved. So nations are entreated to formulate policies that, pro that protect the human rights of uh, displaced persons. And this should be done within the context of international humanitarian law. 
And there are also issues also, that's like dealing with um, displacement, migration policies also deal with issues that tend to combat or uh, deal with issues of well, the precipitating factors of internal migration. So policy measures to put in place, structures put in place to ensure that people do not necessarily have to uh, just move internally. Then we also have migration data. Data is very important in terms of developing um, the national migration profile and also developing um, migration policies. So the nation states are encouraged to put in place robust systems of um, to put in place national information system that are very good in terms of um, gathering migration data. Where this we're able to know the migration patterns of a, a country, the process of migration, the destination areas. These are all very important. They are also used in, in developing the migration documents for good migration governance. Then the migration policy also make provisions of diaspora engagement. Uh, diaspora has been identified as a very key group in terms of um, development of their countries of origin and then the African continent as a whole. So it is also important to have structures to deal with the database of the diaspora, to be able to have information about the skills and then the professions that the diaspora have and ways that we can also include them in national um, development. So structures should be set up to have bodies, especially in Ghana, we have the diaspora bureau that did that assess at the liaison body um, with the diaspora and then the government. And also programs have also been, annual programs also be set up to ensure that the diaspora return to the continent and their countries of origin to be abreast with the issues of development that are going, especially in terms of business and areas that they can also invest in and contribute to development. Then migration and trade is also a very important area, especially that we are dealing with free movement of people that need to facilitate regional and continental trade and contribute to the free movement of goods and services. This trade also help, what, what, and policies are also to deal with these issues because most of the time migrants are people who migrate within short um, periods. So um, especially in terms of border movement, an enabling environment should be created for them to be able to move in and out with their goods and then to support this, the African continental free trade area. And then migration and health has also been um, an issue that has existed for a long time. So the relationship between migration and health is very complex. Either to the focus has been on ensuring that migrants, uh, migrants are considered to be the most contribute uh, to spreading of disease, the uh, communicable um, disease, especially the avian flu, HIV AIDS, and other, and other um, communicable diseases. But until the coming of COVID-19, the migration and health is an issue that has not been taken serious in terms of its impacts. But with the COVID-19, we've seen the impact that migration could have on health and how health issues also impact on migration because we saw that there was restriction of movement and this restriction of movement also impacted on livelihood, the flow of people and goods and services, all this impact. And there are also the issues of human rights abuse. So issues of xenophobic behavior, discrimination against migrants, because there were issues that migrants they didn't have access to national facilities because of the intense of the COVID-19, nation states focus more on their nationals in terms of securing their safety and migrants were left to deal 
on their own. So, and migration governance is also very important. It is important to promote migration and human mobility in a dignified and orderly in a way that also benefits society. And also in terms of dealing with migration of um, governance, it is important to consider these issues. So migration governance is supposed to align with international standards and guarantee the rights of migrants. But well, these international standards are ones that have made provision to ensure that migrants' rights are protected. And remember that most of these um, uh, international agreements are binding on member nations so that safeguard the safety of migrants. Also, to formulate policies based on evidence using whole government approach. And this can be done using if there are specific data that can stick to the issues and make them more relevant and real to the issues that migration policy is supposed to consider. And so to forge partnership to resolve migration-related issues. So the, well, if, if there are international organizations, international bodies, regional bodies that deal with migration like IOM and other related bodies, it's important to forge a partnership with them to get some support. And then to also improve the socioeconomic well-being of migrants society. Now it is also important to also seriously tackle the issue of migration in terms of crisis, like the issue that we have in terms of COVID-19, how provisions should be made to deal with mobility, even though there are crises, how to protect the rights of migrants and also ensure that they are safe. Then to also ensure that migrant migration takes place in a safe condition, which is um, and, and, and also in a good and a dignified manner, which is also very much um, provided for the Global Compact on Migration. Then in dealing with the migration policy, the migration policy framework for Africa also made provision for some cross-cutting issues that migration policy must consider. So these are issues that cut across every aspect of migration and development. So the first one that we'll talk about is migration and development, that this is very key because national policies are to ensure that migration lead to development. Even though considering that migration has its adverse effects because it contributes to brain drain, it contributes to, I would say, um, the, the pollution of social cohesion because you have people from other, who are not, other countries who are not nationals coming in with their own influences of the national social, uh, the nation's social cultural structure. So all these are there. On the other side of the coin, migration also has its benefits, considering the economic benefit of remittances to development and brain circulation, return migration, and the skills that migrants bring, bring on board. So it's also important that migration policies take in account of all these issues and ensure that migration brings developments. And this is also can be done by ensuring that the national migration development plans are integrated into the national, regional, and continental development framework in order to contribute to the achievement of Africa's Agenda 2063 and the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, which seek to ensure that there is comprehensive development in nations and then across the globe. Then there are also issues of um, human rights of migrants. My, the, the state of being a migrant render you very vulnerable and um, amenable to a lot of exploitation, abuses, arbitrary and arrest and detention. So that, all this must be considered. So the rights of migrants at all levels need to be considered in the application. So, and then, so it must be done by considering that legal instruments that have been ratified by countries are all considered, in particular the African Chaton, Human rights 
on human and people rights, and then the International Convention on the Protection of All Migrants, All Rights of uh, Migrants and All Persons. So migrant workers and their families, these are all issues that are supposed to be on top of the agenda of every migration policy. So they're supposed to guide the policy development. And then migration, poverty, and conflicts. These are uh, conflict and poverty are, are important factors that trigger migration in most parts of Africa. So it's also important that migration policies consider all this in an attempt to tackle the root causes of uh, poverty and conflict. And then there are also issues of um, environmental degradation, climate change, which also trigger poverty and also lead to mass displacement of people. So the success of a national migration policy therefore requires the establishment of strategies for pre prevention and then the management of these issues to ensure that they promote good governance and rule of law and then a, a way of dealing with poverty to ensure that if people have to migrate, it, it may not have to be policy that will force them to move. The migration and environment are also issues that are important. Um, all over Africa, especially in the Sahel region, seeing the impact of the environment and then other climatic um, changes that are forcing people to migrate or forcing them to displace people in rural areas into urban areas, therefore contributing to the urban congestion and associated challenges. So the environment might therefore play an important role in the formulation of public policies. Issues must, uh, uh, public policy issues might consider the role that the environment has to play to deal with migration and displacement. Then there's also migration and gender. So it's a very um, cross-cutting issue, considering that in, in Africa, migration used to be more, more of male dominance. Um, females were seen as attachment to the male migrant. They were just accompanying the male migrant. But in recent times, we've seen that migration is becoming more feminized with, uh, with women now migrating independently of men with their own motivations, with an aspiration that they seek to achieve. And in all this, girls are also migrating independently. Young women are also migrating independently. And in terms of even though migrants are vulnerable, women and young girls are more vulnerable in terms of the choices of occupation that they, they find themselves in. So migration policies are supposed to consider all this to ensure that they deal with issues of exploitation and human trafficking and smuggling, which mostly also involve uh, women and young girls. It's also better understand their experiences and also to develop strategies that prevent this mostly cross-border um, crimes. So aside, there are also issues of migration children and um, uh, um, migration children, adolescents and young people are also migrating. So we have issues of independent child migration, a, a, a phenomenon that is also rising and becoming common in the African continent. And then the associated challenges of child trafficking, trafficking in persons, children also form a chunk of those who are being trafficked and smuggled and then abused in Africa. So what I, and most of the time, these are false. We have few cases of independent, um, few cases of this with children consenting to the movement. So a special play should be given to also deal with exchange programs and enable children stay in school, and then also learn towards as related regional and continental integration. Then there's also the migration of um, older persons. Even though this is not a phenomenon in the uh, common phenomenon in the African continent, 
because most of the time these are not motivated by economic reasons. But there are also cases that they may be motivated by economic issues. But aside the economic issues, there are also associated factors that need to be considered by migration policy because um, older persons are also another vulnerable group in terms of their socioeconomic status, their health status. So if they are moving from one environment that they are familiar with to another environment, this tends to pose challenges to them, which is important that public policy should also therefore ensure that their needs are met throughout them, their migration process, process, terms of migration, their destination rest and their adjustments, as well as their basic rights to ensure that they are not abusing anyway. And also there's also another important issue which is common in most of the regs as in terms of portability of social security. So other people who have settled in the country work for years and need to return to their countries of destination. Um, migration policy, make, you should make provisions for them to be able to transfer their social security benefits to their country of um, origin or wherever they want to move and enjoy them. And this has been a challenge in most African countries in terms of trying to ensure that social security benefits are portable. Then there's also the need for capacity building. Given that um, the type of state that we find ourselves, it's necessary to strengthen the human, not only human and capacity, but also institutions in terms of training and then ensure that um, my migration practitioners are equipped with the, the right and then the current skills that they need in international best practice, especially our people in charge of border management. So it is important to run occasional programs, train them workshops, to also train them. So migration policy should also take in consideration all these issues. Then there's also international cooperation. Migration is a cross-cutting issue, it's a cross-border issue that affects and multiple stakeholders. So it is important that there is international cooperation. And then and, and this phenomenon is also about constant collaboration and cooperation with other African states. So if there is this cohesion, even at, at the African um, continent, if there's cohesion issues of dealing with migration issues, they could present a common voice at the global level. And this cooperation also involves not only state organizations, but civil society organizations, regional and continental organizations that are very important in dealing with migration issues. So that's to manage diversity in host communities. As I mentioned earlier, migration tend to Im impact on state harmony and then cohesion. And any country that has experienced the immigration of other nationals know that it impacts on their economy, their culture, their social structures. All these are, are influenced. And it is important that states acknowledge that these issues are common because they tend to be comp uh, competition for the resources that a state have. So we tend to see conflicts between nationals and migrants, and so especially in the issues where the communities are host um, refugees. So it is important that state um, migration policies make provisions to deal with these diversities to ensure that they are all harmonized to the benefits of migrants, uh, the state as a whole, and then to the migrants to ensure that migrants are not discriminated against in terms of enjoying the public services. So in conclusion, it is important to note that the existence of a national migration policy certainly facilitates good migration governance. And this also helps in dealing with 
the various diversities that migration brings within the states. But this is not a guarantee for effective management of all the problems associated with migration, but at least they serve as guidelines to deal with the pertinent migration issues to avoid escalation. And so it's also important to also note that the migration policy framework for Africa is also providing, it's, it's also serving as an excellent guide for the development of migration policy that respects a continental, regional, and then international agreement. As also to deal with migration at all levels. So based on this, it's also the main challenge is that most African countries still do not have a comprehensive um, document specifically for managing migration. Even though some countries are, uh, have drafted policies, others are in the process of drafting, others have drafted and then as I'm, Assented to them, but the implementation process is still underway. So it is also important that African states which do not have such documents and, and are still largely in the majority must therefore be encouraged to work towards this in accordance with their legislations and procedures to facilitate um, regional integration and good migration management. Thank you very much and wish you all the best in the course.